Hi everyone, and thank you for purchasing the collection listing Shopify section by QuickCode. In this video, I'll be showing you how to actually use it. So if you haven't installed it yet, please refer to the separate video included in the package. And you also have access to a PDF with instructions. So to get started, head over to your theme editor and navigate to the page that you want to add the section to. Over on the left, click Add Section and search for the, the section that you just added, the Q collection list. Over on the left, you'll see uh, what we call blocks. Each block here represents uh, a different link, basically, or for a collection. So you could go in here and you can select, excuse me, select collection. Let's say we have that collection right there. We can choose to, to take the image from the collection that you set in the admin, or you can select the custom image. So let's just put that image in there for now. We can select another another collection. Like that. And if you had more collections, as you can see, I don't have any, so I'll just add in some additional default ones. Custom image. And one more. So now we've set the different um, links to the collections. And you can, of course, add more if you want, or you can remove sections if you only have a few by going down here and clicking Remove Block. Next, click on the main section title here. And then over on the right, we have a bunch of different settings for you to uh, set up. So starting with the section title, we have the title here. You can put in whatever you'd like as the title. Next. We, we can set the HTML element of the title itself. This is good for two reasons. One, for better SEO, meaning you can set the, the, the HTML element to H1 or H6, meaning uh, Google or other search engines, they place higher importance on or various importance on different um, um, heading types. Uh, in, it's a matter of hierarchy, basically. Um, like H1 is a very important title, so Google puts a lot of importance on that. Usually it's recommended just to have one H1 on a page, so that would be on, on the very top of a page, uh, explaining what the content or the subject of that page is. And then others, you could do H2s, H3s, and so on, um, depending on the content. Um, the other, the other uh, uh, benefit is that you can inherit the styling options set in your theme for it. So for instance, if you had H2s and add a certain bold or a different color or a different font that's already set in your theme, you can already set it up like that. You won't have to go down here, down to the other uh, settings that we offer to adjust that. Moving on, since this is a uh, carousel, you can set how many slides you'd like to show. So right now we're showing four, but you can show three, for instance, or show five. In this case, five, we only have five different slides to show. So the slider actually turns off. And let's put in, in four. We can autoplay the carousel. And once that happens, every four seconds, which you can change here, the uh, slider will, will uh, advance. And let's just turn that off. Overflow of items, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the next and previous slides are partially hidden, uh, kind of in terms of design kind of gives a hint that there's more to see. So you can have that or you could just turn that right off and just show the four that you want to show. You can adjust the spacing between the slides if you want more space. You can do the same setting for mobile as well. Next, we, we we provide a custom arrow 
or a default arrow uh, right over on, on both sides. If you'd like to use that style, then you can just go in and change the color of it, uh, do whatever you'd like. You can adjust the distance. Now the distance, we have two different options, inside of the wrapper or outside. So inside would be this way and you can set the distance from the outer edge inwards. Or if you do outside, then you can set it up something like that, where it's outside of the, of the wrapper itself. And if you want to use a different style altogether of, a, of an arrow, uh, you can update the um, upload an arrow itself uh, through here. Or if you want to use an, an SVG vector image, then you would have to update that into the settings dash uh, files section in the Shopify admin. Uh, copy the path and then paste right into here. Moving on, we have this this uh, button or toggle. Um, as you probably know, the reason you bought this section, you can click that and then you convert from a slider uh, to a grid right on the same page so you don't have to jump to another page. Uh, it gives it just a little bit nicer um, or a, a better a better user experience where they don't have to switch pages. Immediately they're right there and they can see the... Uh, the various uh, collections in this case. Um, so you can change the, the label on that. So let's say we want to do expand collections, or you could uh, change the minimize collections and then it changes right over there. Then for the grid, we can change on the grid. Let's say we'd like to have just two in each, uh, in each column, or you can have four. Like so, you can adjust the gap between the the the, uh, the items themselves, the slides themselves. Excuse me. Put that at three. You can see this is the distance, and now we enlarge the gap, and there's a bigger gap. As you can see, and we can also adjust the gap on mobile as well. Next, we have section width. So section width. It's best explained if we give a background color. We can set the maximum width of the section. Right now it's at 1280. We can make it, of course, much smaller, like that. Or if we'd like this background color to go all the way to the full, to the full edge of the browser, we click full width, and as you can see, it stretches out while the max width still contains the content within that. Now, if you'd like the the content or the slides to also extend all the way, then we would set real full width and then content max width is ignored. Moving on, we have uh, section, section top margin, bottom margin and padding for top, bo top, bottom and horizontal. So margin is the distance above and below the section itself. So if we want to have more space above Let's say a different section that's there. We can add that in and it pushes it down. And same thing with uh, below on the bottom margin. And padding is the distance within the section. So we can add more space if we want some more space right there. Here, let's say it's a little bit too, too cramped. So we can add some more padding right there and it gives us that, that nice little cushion. And then horizontal padding is the padding on the sides. Now, not, not always is this something that's very visible. Usually if we do real full width and we'd like these to go all the way to the edge, then we would put that to zero. Now, because we're not, we don't have an overflow, it doesn't seem as though the, the slides are extending. So if we go scroll right back up and we set show overflow of items, then it really, we really do feel the, the overflow of a full width uh, section of the browser. Um, now the arrows, as you notice, have disappeared because we have the distance outside of the wrapper. So in this case, we would set inside of wrapper and then we can adjust the distance a little bit more however we want for it to be covering in a, in a, in a 
more comfortable or visible spot. Moving on, we have the same options for margins and padding for mobile version. Next, we have section title alignment. The section title, this one right over here, we can make it left aligned, make it right aligned, center as well. We can set the color. We can choose a custom font, either from what Shopify offers or if you have a manually um, installed font, then you can uh, use the CSS. Usually it looks something like this, and you can paste that family name right in there, and then it'll import. You could set the font weight. So for instance, if you wanted it to be bold, or you wanted it to be much thinner, you could do top margin, pushing up, and then bottom margin, pushing the rest of the, of the content down. You can give a custom font size to the title, to, yeah, to the title, a line height and letter spacing. We have this, those same settings for the title that'll be adjusted for mobile, so you can have different font sizes for mobile and desktop views. Next, we have um, the collection image styling. So we have three different options, we can have a portrait view of the image, square view, and just the cropping happens automatically. Or you could do a landscape, just like that. Now, in some cases, you'd like to have a custom height to the image. So you can adjust that just like that, however you'd like. And the same, you can adjust the custom height for mobile. Next, we can adjust the uh, the topography and the colors of the uh, the toggle button here. So let's say we'd like this to be black. We'd like it to be blue on hover. You can see. We can show the underline or just hide the underline. We can use a custom font for it. Font weight font size, line height, and letter spacing as well. And same goes for mobile. Next, we could set the, the collection title. So we can actually set to show it or not. We can set the HTML element of it, or whatever, whichever one uh, suits us best. If we'd like left aligned, that's also possible, of course. Custom font font weight and the rest of those. Um, for minimum height, this is a problem that sometimes occurs. Uh, specifically in this one, it's going to be hard to show unless I enlarge the font size drastically. Oops, that's the toggle. So let's say we make it really big or your 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 um, title is very long, so it already drops, wraps over to the next line. So as you can see here, we have two lines and here we have one and then the buttons don't align and sometimes it gives a little jagged look, um, as you can see right here. So you can set the title minimum height to be the same as the these two lines so that the buttons align. So we can adjust it like that. And as you can see, you have a maximum of 100 pixels and here. They don't quite align, but these are very big and wouldn't be recommended to be used anyway. So let's say if we just make this a little bit smaller. Now they align, as you can see. You can also adjust, in these cases, the align height. So like it, let's say a little bit more cramped like that, and then you can lower the minimum height a little bit more, something like that. You can give a little bit more spacing between the image and the title. So just giving a top margin like that. Next, we have the same options for mobile. Moving on, we can change the label for the shop now buttons. So shop today, for instance, or something like that. 
So, or we could just all together hide the button if we want, if we'd like. And then we can set the custom font for the button. Um, horizontal padding, for instance, uh, we'd like the button to be wider, to be a little bit taller. We can make the border thicker for all or gone altogether, like that. Um, add border radius. Uh, you can give some more mar um, button margin like that. You can set the font size and the letter spacing. We can we have also a few a uh, few settings for mobile. And lastly, we have the option to change the colors of the button itself. So let's say we'd like the text color to be white, the background to be blue, and the border, let's say, to be blue as well. But then once we hover over it, let's say we'd like it to be um, a background that's, that's transparent, the color to be blue, and the border color to be blue. So when we hover over, we, can, we have that type of style. So that's it. Uh, thank you again. And we hope that this section helps you achieve your website goals. If you have any problems or questions, please don't hesitate to contact us through the support page. And that's it. Hope you enjoy it.